Another thing I couldn't resist buying, the new Nintendo Game & Watch color screen. I guess it's color screen is the name of the product. So I've seen some teardowns on this already. It appears to be a uh, ST Microelectronics ARM Cortex M3 based portable emulation system. I think someone already has Doom running on it, of course. So uh, yeah, this thing will probably be hacked in no time flat. Not by me, that's not what I'm good at. Special thanks to you. Yeah, because we bought it. Super Mario Brothers, Super Mario Brothers The Lost Levels, Ball and Time. So these are all gonna be no mapper games. Super Mario Brothers The Lost Levels was the um, <clears throat> original Super Mario Brothers 2 in Japan. Of course, we got a reskin of Doki Doki Panic. I always wanted a Game & Watch when I was a kid, but they're way too expensive. Even now, I don't think you could buy one for 50 bucks, which is what this costs. So yeah, it's got your classic uh, Japanese Famicom uh, styling, you know, the gold and red. I think it looks really cool. Game time pause set. Where's the select button for when this thing gets completely hacked? Is there a battery tab? Oh, the power button right there. Press time button. Well, those are some pretty good graphics. I mean, this is a pretty nice quality screen. Well, I mean, Nintendo's not gonna skimp out. So, I wonder if this clock is running in a Nintendo emulator? I think someone said it is. It's kind of weird. Oh, it changes the background. Interesting. Um, okay, so this overlay isn't, isn't running as a Nintendo because the text is way too large. He's far too large. Yeah. Set time. What time is it? Super Mario Brothers. Okay, let's get the magnifying glass out. Oh, this is cool. Oh, the overlay. That's a neat box. I should keep that, you know. It'll be worth a million dollars someday. I'm just kind of curious how the pixel scaling is on this. It's probably easier to see with the camera blow up. Um, it looks like it looks pretty good. It looks like it's one to one. I don't see any compressed pixels. So like what happens a lot of times is when they have a uh, on oh, the screen looks better in person than it does on this camera, by the way. Um, you know, if they don't have the right pixel ratio, there'll be some pixels squashed or missing. Okay, they hacked it to use A for start. All right, so it's not using the in-game pause, it's using emulator pause. I got all my Nintendo busting screws here. Nintendo Busters, do, 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 do. if there's something overpriced at the store, who are you going to call? Nintendo Busters, do, 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 do. if you download the game, but then they want you to download it some more, who are you going to call? Nintendo Busters, do, 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 do. well it opens up a lot nicer than that, what was that thing, that <laughs> stupid arcade game? Oh, they had one of those at Target where I bought this, very near to this. Oh, okay, not much to it. I wonder if they have data going to the USB-C port. It's funny, these companies always, they're like, oh, someone hacked our system. It's like, well, you're the ones who leave connections to the USB port. Not like that would stop anyone with this. Oh, that's interesting. They got the, the um, speaker at a little bit of an angle. See that? So it's got a little bit of resonance to come out the side. Now that makes sense. And it is probably got a piece of double-sided tape. That's good. It's better than not doing that. Yep, double-sided tape. And what do we got? 525 milliamp hours. It's not bad. Editing that uh, 3D printer review video made me think of this thing. That's why I went and bought it. Um, because it pretty much has the same chip. Well, the same chip driving the screen on that printer is driving this whole thing. It's a STM Microelectronics. Well, ST Microelectronics. Uh, STM 32H780. Uh-oh, what's that? Uh-oh, what is that? <laughs> that looks like a programming header. Oh, this was the power button. Okay, I'll just set that aside. Editing that video, reviewing that 3D printer where they had the ST Microelectronics uh, Cortex-Arm M3 
driving the screen. It made me think of this unit, that's why I went and bought it, because I saw from reviews it has the same, or very similar to the same uh, microcontroller. Sir, they've breached the outer limits of our case. Well, we're doomed. Don't even bother with our security screws anymore. Say hello to the troops, dear. I may be bad, but I feel good. I think I was at MGC a couple years ago. They had the uh, the Game & Watch pinball like with the two screens, and I was really close to buying it, but I think I wanted like $70 for it, and I'm like, am I ever gonna do anything with this? I have thought, because I saw that Dave Jones video where he ordered a custom LCD screen from uh, China when he was making his multimeter, and I thought it would be fun to do that, but make it like your own custom crappy uh, LCD game, you know, like those cheapy games you could buy at Radio Shack back in the day. But you know, Game & Watch, Game & Watch was the, the creme de la creme, the piece de resistance of those games. I also like the, uh, like the VFD games, like, uh, you know, like Donkey Kong and the Frogger. I think I have a Pac-Man, one of those. Uh, I'm gonna desolder the speaker. It's actually a pretty decent sized speaker. See, they put it in sideways so they could have a bigger speaker. Now again, anyone expecting me to hack wonders with this? No, it ain't me, babe. No, 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 it ain't me, babe. Trying to make you mock in society. Using all the tricks that you... <clears throat> oh, there's nothing there. How many layers is this board? I'm sure it's just probably just two layers. No, no, it is a multi-layer board Um, because if you look See this header, which is going to be obviously connected to the microcontroller. See all the vias, right? They go through it. And the other side, those vias don't go anywhere. So this is probably a four-layer board, which means, uh, look at this header. <clears throat> Let's think about this. Uh, what would it be? Ground, which is right there. Clock, data, reset, power reference. So that's probably yet another SWD uh, ARM programming header. This is going to be a Quad Spy Flash uh, serial EEPROM. This is where they load the games from. And as we've seen in other videos, they use um, they use a type of like bit check to basically verify the ROM. So it basically prevents you, and they, they do, according to some other video, they do use some sort of, um, oh, I don't know. It's, some, it's not really encryption. It's just a way to, um, it just prevents you from dumping straight ROMs onto this and using it, right? Because in theory you could. And, Probably, since this thing's been out a week, I'm sure someone's already done it. Uh, then over here, this is gonna be your charge controller for, you know, the LiPo. And that's pretty much it. You could make like a cool little, you know, if you just programmed your own games, you can make a cool little game system with this. Um, I like these little buttons. They, re they remind me of, you know, the old Game & Watch. Game & Watch was so cool. I mean, I know, I know, well, maybe you guys, I'm, kind of have a history of bagging on Nintendo. I think it started back with the Game Boy Advance because I just thought it was so stupid that it wasn't um, backlit. The buttons feel nice. I mean, they feel like the original Game & Watch buttons. And this looks like it's, yeah, it's actually metal. So that's nice. So if Nintendo is selling this for $50, divide by three, add the Nintendo tax, probably cost $10. Four wires here. The four wires in this connector might make you think it's a resistive touchscreen, but that's probably for the backlight. I mean, we can we can touch that quite easily just by not plugging it in. All right, let me get a shot of the chip, and then I'll look up the data sheet. It's the STM32H7B0 value line. Oh, Nintendo, always trying to save money. But it still sounds pretty powerful. It's actually an ARM Cortex-M7 with double precision floating point unit. And it runs up to 280 megahertz. That should be more than enough to emulate a Nintendo. I could probably emulate Super Nintendo. Uh, let's see, embedded flash memory of 128K bytes. Okay, that's probably why they have the external EEPROM because there's probably not enough for the emulator and some games. On the fly decryption of Octo Spy external serial flash memory, which is what that is. And, oh, and it has a uh, LCD TFT controller it, built into it with dual layer support. Uh, JPEG hardware accelerator. Oh wow, up to 35 communication interfaces, including FD CAN, USB 2.0, high-speed camera interface, parallel synchronous data input output slave interface, 
Oh, it has a external memory 32-bit parallel interface. Wow, that's pretty cool. So you could actually attach parallel memory to this externally. Uh, the ST blah blah value line provides 128 k bytes of flash memory, 1.4 megabytes of SRAM with a scattered architecture. That's quite a bit for any microcontroller. Yeah, but uh, yeah, this is a, not a bad little chip. I wonder how much it costs. Four dollars and well, that's just that's catalog price. Four dollars and seventy nine cents. So yeah, that's not too bad. Again, you know that fits with my estimate that the whole thing probably cost ten bucks. Cool, I wonder if we can attach a header to this and program it. I found the data sheet. Uh, looks like it has a graphical accelerator which uh, offers bit blitting, which they would be using to make um, graphics, especially things like sprites. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, this is a pretty powerful chip. And this is the value line. Someone online already figured out the pinout for this port. It's a SWD port, which is very common for uh, ARM chips. And I've just, uh, ported it out to this header here so I could easily flash this thing without even taking it apart because apparently someone's already put doom on it <laughs> I saw some people online saying that oh you know like 1.4 megabytes isn't that much but of RAM but that actually is a lot of RAM for a microcontroller um, yeah so I'm just gonna reinforce this and cut a hole in the case so it's accessible and then uh, I'll put it back together yeah hopefully this all fits oh sounds like the old maker bot is done printing another print. It will never die. I promise. I will never die. Oh no. I made the hole in the wrong side. <laughs> I'm a loser. I'm a loser, baby. So why don't you unsubscribe for me? Oh yeah, I did a, such a nice, neat job with it. And the beige color even goes with the other colors, but uh, what what's this hole? Uh, that's, uh, oh, oh, I know, I know. That's where I put the SD card slot once people eventually mod it to have SD card slots. Um, Yeah, hashtag planned it that way. Oh yeah, look, you have plenty of room for a micro SD card slot there. Yeah, I'm just gonna put it in now and act like I planned that all along. Oh yeah, because what people could probably do is they could probably hack the interface from the quad spy over to a micro SD card slot. I've got all sorts of card slots to choose from. Well, obviously it's gotta be a micro. Uh, let's see. Hmm, this one plugs in from that side. Uh, does, oh, is it gotta... No, it's not. Oh, it's gotta pull it out apparently. Uh, no. What is this? Oh, it's an Adafruit breakout board. But this one does voltage conversion. I don't need that because this is going to be a <clears throat> it's going to be a 3.3 volt microcontroller. So I don't need to. Oh, this one's got a spring load on it. This is nice. Ooh, yeah, sexy. Maybe I should unplug the power before I do this. There we go. It's a couple of uh, solder blob test points near that. I'm actually going to. Hit those with my solder wick to flatten them out. Because um, you remember that uh, cheap Menards watch I was talking about that where, yeah, if I went in and actually um, solder blobbed the test points, it would make it, probably would keep me from folding it all back together. Um, actually, didn't oh yeah, just the other day, <clears throat> cut like a piece of plastic. Oh, it's kind of thick though. Yeah, it should be all right. I've scraped off the solder mask right here, so I should be able to use that to attach at least some of the can of this SD card to the circuit board. Just got to make sure I don't hit those test points. But Ben, how will you hold it in place long enough to solder it? Well, you may be shocked to know that I've gone with hot glue. Hey, I'm going to use that stuff people don't think I have. A little bit of flux. Happy little clouds. And then just hit it from the side, make sure it's flat. Uh, come on, get in there. It's actually some exposed copper right there. I'm assuming that's ground. I'll double check. But if, if it is, I can use that as another anchor point. There's a little stiffness, but I think it should be all right. We have three point. We have three solder points, but a little hot glue in the back. You know, you can't hurt, right? 
Oh yeah, like I uh, <clears throat> planned it all along. Yeah, obviously. All right, so I wired up this adapter. I think it should work. Atmel Ice to uh, SWD for ARM, just like that. And I also added an SD card slot on the top. I haven't wired it up yet, but I bet eventually someone will come up with a hack where they can remove this quad spy and hook up a flash card instead. Well, I think programming this is beyond the scope of this video, but uh, yeah, I might cover it in the future if I make any progress. But yeah, the Game & Watch, it's kind of lame that it only has Mario Brothers and Ball on it, but it's really nicely made. It's got quality components, real metal face. So, you know, as a novelty, it's pretty cool. And yeah, it's 50 bucks, but you know, it is a quality product. Oh, one last thing. I forgot to take a look at the screen itself. Uh, it's in a Lux. That's actually a good brand. So again, win. Of course, I will copy this data so I can figure out how to interface it. Um, the microcontroller has an interface for up to 24-bit color, so I'm curious to see how they're driving this. All right, I've got the Game & Watch back together. I added an SD card slot for when that inevitably is hacked in. And then, of course, the programming port for SWD type programming. Um, I don't have an ST-Link for STM chips. I do have an ML ICE, and apparently that should, in theory, work because they all have the same uh, ARM core or type of core. However, I could just buy a cheap ST-Link clone off of Amazon, and that would probably get the job done, too. So basically, I just wanted to put this back together and prep it for the inevitable new code that people will write for it. I mean, there's really no reason you couldn't just write a standard Nintendo emulator for that uh, ARM chip, and then <laughs> I know it could be done, and then people who are much better programmers than me will get it done. But yeah, it's a really cool unit. I mean, you know... It looks, it's beautiful looking. Um, it's like, oh, I couldn't afford this when I was a kid, but now I can get it for 50, 50 bucks, which is still a lot, but you know, it's a Nintendo tax. And in the meantime, I can uh, play Mario. Oh, I noticed you can like spawn enemies by pushing B. See that? That's pretty cool. And then when the minute changes, he actually like jumps up and smashes the number blocks. So they actually put some thought into this.